let's talk about back bends. If you remember what we said about the spine, with back bends, we want to focus on the thoracic spine, the upper chest, because that's the part of the spine that curves backwards and we want it to straighten up. It's important not to collapse in the lower back. When you're back bending, you need to have all those bandhas engaged and the actual mudra that you want to use is Ashwini mudra, which is the pull of the anal sphincter in and up. So you're actually squeezing your butthole in and up and that's what's going to be protecting your lower back, keeping it long and let you focus on the upper back. At the same time, you want that glute lock, they go in and up, the stomach lock and the ribs to be closed. Let's explore Cobra Pose. Lie down on your belly and bring legs together, feet together, heels together. Press all 10 toes on the ground. As soon as you press the toes on the ground, the kneecaps come off the floor. You keep them there. So keep pressing feet on the ground, all 10 toes on the ground. Already, if you feel like your belly is in the way, then you can pull everything forward so that you help with bringing the ribs forward and up. Bring the hands under the shoulders, press feet down, press pelvis down, bring elbows in, you want the elbows to be close to the body, and then shoulder blades back, chest forward. Inhale, bring the pelvic floor forward, and exhale, press hands down, and come up to Cobra, four, three, Keep pressing all 10 toes down, bring navel in and up, pick up the back bottom ribs, four, two, and then you can bring your chin up, give those no stick, four, one, exhale, come down. Now we'll focus on what happens with the shoulder blades. Now we want to find that ansa banda, the shoulder lock. You want to bring the shoulders back and down, bring the shoulder blades together, Bring the inner shoulder blades forward and bring the bottom inner shoulder blades forward into the ribs. So you're popping the chest forward. You're calling the upper back, which is our point of focus. Throughout the back bend, you want to press the feet down and that actually contracts the glutes and the hamstrings. You want the back of the body to be contracted so that the front of the body is extending, just like we saw with the forward folds, we were doing the opposite, where we're extending the back of the body and contracting the front of the body. Here we want to contract the back of the body, so we find more extension with the front, and we have the, that effect of back bending. So let's try again. Press hands on the ground, elbows in, press feet down, pelvis down, inhale, navel in and up, and exhale, press hands down, press feet down, press pelvis down, and come up, four, three, Ashwini Mudra, squeeze your butthole in and up, chin up, and give it the nose stick, four, two, and then bring shoulder blades down, inner shoulder blades in and forward, bottom of shoulder blades in, and forward, bend the elbow slightly to pop the chest forward even more. Four, one, come down. These same ideas are valid in all of the back bends. <laughs> we'll now see uh, at the camel pose and we'll focus on what happens with the legs. Let's please the same cues. But now, because you don't have the legs straight, instead of pressing the feet to engage the back of the legs, we're pressing the knees down. So keep sending the six bones into the ground. That's important to focus on six bones going down, because if you focus on squeezing the butt, then you're 
likely to externally rotate the legs and you don't want that the whole time you want the inner groins the inner thighs to move back so you have this inner rotation of the thighs in order to keep that but also keep that contraction of the back of the legs it's good to think of sit bones coming down inner groins coming in and back and press knees down and press top of the feet onto the ground so let's try it bring your hands to the lower back hands together and elbows together set sit bones into the knees bring navel in and up squeeze your butt hole bring shoulder blades back down inner shoulder blades in and forward inhale top floor up and exhale press knees down press feet down and push the chest up for three pick up the chin and if you can gaze at the back of the room bring the hands to the heels for two keep sending sit bones into the knees inner groins back navel in and up close the ribs shoulder blades back and down all one to come up keep the engagement of the legs keep sending sit bones down navel in and up everything is strong press feet down and inhale come up exhale sit on the heels and last tricky back bend is the wheel pose with the wheel pose a lot is happening so take your time and if you're not there yet i'll give the modifications so we'll go into it in three steps and you can stay with the step that you wish we'll start with bridge so lie on your back press the heels on the ground feet are under the kneecaps gaze make sure that the feet are under the kneecaps legs are hip distance apart place the hands to the ground and the tips of your fingers are caressing the back of the heels. Press heels down, inhale again, pick up the pelvic floor, squeeze your anus, and exhale. Press heels down and reach hips up for bridge. Four, three. Keep pressing heels down and keep sending knees away from you and inner thighs into the ground, just like in Camel Ustrasana. Four, two. Press heels to the ground to contract the glutes, to contract the hamstrings, and zip everything in and up, chest to chin, four, one. From here, option to go to first step of wheel. Bring hands next to the ears, fingers facing the shoulders. Press elbows into the wrists. You already feel the chest popping up. And then exhale, press heels down and bring crown of the head to the ground. Four, three. Hands are next to the head. Keep pressing elbows into the wrists. Keep pressing crown of the head into the ground to lift the shoulder blades up into the ceiling. Four, two. And keep inner groins coming down and knees moving away from the body, keeping the lower back long for one. Either stay here, go back to bridge, or go for wheel. If you're going for wheel, press hands down and lift up for three. Keep pressing hands down, straighten the elbows, bring the elbows in, elbows should stay above the hands, hands should stay under the shoulders for two. Navel in and forward. Pick up the back of the chest and press the heels down, the balls of the feet down. Move the knees away from you, inner groins down, four, one. Exhale, come back carefully. Keeping everything engaged, especially the mudra and the blocks while you're coming down. So it's a lot of information. Take what helps you. <laughs> For me, the most important thing was to master the locks so that I would avoid injuring my lower back. So know what you're doing, keep the right engagements, 
the whole body should be working. That's why yoga is a holistic body exercise. And um, of course, that's just asana, that's the physical practice of yoga. But through asana, we also get to see where our mind goes. And the practice is to keep our mind still and calm throughout all the things going on with the body, with the external circumstances, and also uh, with the stories and the thoughts that come into our head, but they don't really represent us.